Hey, Adam, how are you today? Doing well. <laughs> Person who just departed us was Colin Martin. He's a sales guy, so you got to give him a little, uh, a little extra love there. He'll be joining us back in a second. He is today's moderator. He's the uh, Colin's the chief revenue officer for Copus USA. And I guess we'll kind of, while he's coming back in, we'll kind of bounce ahead a little bit. Adam, you want to tell us a little bit about your role with Copus, what you do, and why you're here today? Sure. Uh, my name is Adam Drews. I'm the CTO of Copus. Uh, my background is in software development, workflows, business process improvement, and ERP and accounting. Excellent. And uh, I'm in my role today as Chief Information Officer for Serving Intel. I'm also the CEO and founder. And uh, I am the, uh, the person, the leader responsible for driving innovation, specifically in terms of software manufacturing with our group. Um, I'm the one who uh, got us on the AI train back in March of this year, and we've created an AI solution, a dedicated solution, just for the senior living world. And so we're going to be going through some aspects of uh, AI, both empowered from a operation standpoint, and we're also going to be doing it from an ERP standpoint. Those are the two for today. And I see that our brother, Colin, has joined up. We just went through introductions. So, Colin, why don't you uh, share a little bit about yourself? I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of Copus. I'm the obviously least technologically adept person of our speakers today. However, I'm super happy to be in presence of uh, Lance and Adam and, and, and in terms of, of what we have to, uh, to address today. Hi, Adam, would you start? I'll help. Uh... Here. Sure. Uh, Copus was founded in 99 as a software development firm, uh, but we've grown into uh, other areas and specifically targeting the Microsoft platform for, for most of what we do, uh, specifically on the ERP side uh, with Dynamics 365 Business Central. So we're helping organizations uh, get their operations and financial houses in order and then Additionally, through the Power Platform, which uh, is about automation and workflow, as well as data visualization, uh, and uh, additionally, software development for all those things that kind of sit in between the major applications that maybe you can't buy off the shelf. Fantastic. And we are uh, serving Intel, or Transaction Management Solution. And so what we do is uh, at the core of what we provide is point of sale, but actually we have an enterprise solution that goes at a much deeper rate than that. There's all types of, uh, we're actually approaching an ERP solution from an operation standpoint. So we get very deep into people management, transaction management, accounting and billing. Uh, we do a lot of things, but I like to say the core of all of this is definitely on the transaction side of things. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so look, what we're going to walk through here today, and, and thank you, Lance and Adam, for, for the brief overview of Copus and serving Intel. What we're going to walk through here today is the transform transformative power of AI and serving Intel and with, with serving Intel's market, how we drive uh, and then we're going to dive into Dynamics 365 Business Central and the pivotal roles of accounting and finance, uh, it, what those can have in the senior living sector. We'll have some question and answers and we'll conclude. In terms of the expertise that we have, you know, serving Intel's uh, uh, it, throughout its 13 years of being in business has developed a deep understanding and expertise in the senior living sector. Um, and throughout the 24 years of Copus's history, our, our expertise is in helping our customers to better leverage systems and technology so that they can grow. And there are many, there, there are a few different facets of Copus's uh, 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 technology stack and, and where, our, where our focus is in the market. We are a custom software development firm and we have, over time, we also have, uh, over the past six years, have leveraged that capability into also being uh, one of the leading uh, Microsoft Business Central uh, implementation and technology partners. And so um, bringing that together with uh, um, 
serving Intel, serving Intel's understanding along with ours of the Microsoft technology stack and how AI accelerates and expands all of the capabilities of that technology stack so that you can better uh, uh, turn and accelerate the flywheel of your business is why we're here today. That's awesome. I, I like to think of this as uh, love people, love data. Because really, this is what this is about. We, we serving Intel, we serve a number of different sectors, but serving Intel is, or, or excuse me, senior living is our primary sector that we serve. And our organization, we've been running on a very sophisticated ERP and CRM system uh, for the last 11 years. And we're in the process of migrating to Dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so the first piece of what we've consumed is the sales piece at the very top uh, of the continuum there, where Copus is on towards, uh, say, 4 o'clock. Finance operation is where Business Central lays. W within all of these dynamic solutions, all of them are empowered by artificial intelligence. Uh, specifically, at the beginning of the year, Microsoft made an $11 billion investment into OpenAI and deployed OpenAI's technology across the entire dynamic stack. So we're not here today just to talk about an accounting package or to talk about a transaction management or a point of sale package. We're talking about the entire corporate structure. So from our organization, we started last year with what's called developer operations, DevOps, and it's software manufacturing, which actually isn't even shown on this continuum. It would be between field service and finance operations if it was on here, but this is an internal thing. From us, it's our sales team deploying, learning, using the sales and the marketing capabilities within Dynamics. Of course, Copus, a partner of ours, a sister company for eight years, is assisting us in deploying Business Central. Well, we were on QuickBooks Enterprise before, so we're elevating up our accounting and finance department to Business Central. And then from there, our team is consuming customer service and field service underlying the customer ticketing system across, across all aspects of Dynamics 365. Customer insights is really the power of artificial intelligence within Dynamics 365. And then there's other parts of this that are really cool that are further down the road or probably better to be offered by another company that specializes in that. For example, human resources, talent acquisition and management is an entire, I mean, these, these modules are giant. It's an entire module structure for managing human beings in an organization. And uh, I don't know, uh, Copus, you're not there. We're not there. I don't know if you or either one of us may ever want to go there. But there are firms out there that we know in the ecosystem that specialize in that, and that's where we can help bring in somebody else, uh, subject matter expert to help somebody evaluate, to help somebody engage, deploy, and then utilize, consume these products. So these products all, over the course of Microsoft's recent, say, 20 years, they've all developed, they've all matured, they've all become part of what's called a unified platform that's built on top of Power BI. You're going to hear a few of these terms as we go through this today. Um, but all of this now being empowered by AI makes this the predominant solution for managing a corporation, whether you're a startup, you got a couple of communities, or you're running a thousand communities. does not matter. Uh, these are the best tools to use to maximize efficiencies and productivities within an organization. So this is uh, the goal is to go through some of this and talk about how AI works with Dynamics, along with a, a few side options. Thank you, Lance. <laughs> Adam. Do you have anything that you'd like to add to that in terms of, you know, what you're going to go through in detail here in a few minutes? I think ultimately about connecting all of the pieces of the puzzle and, and ultimately getting your data onto a platform that can both be queried and acted upon regardless of where it is on the spectrum is, is a piece that that kind of empowers and and multiplies the effect of things like AI and automation. Right. Because when we right. have access to all of those things that we can we can do more within those workflow streams. 
Right, right. And, and Adam, I know that you've been real, you know, as Lance has been and our teams have been in our, in our companies, Adam, you have been digging into the, the power and possibilities of AI within, within what we do with our customers, you know, every day. Um, can you give just briefly just a, a, a glimpse, a couple of small examples of where your eyes have been opened in terms of how we can better operate with our customers in order for them to be more profitable and have better systems in place so they can grow better? Sure. Yeah. As a company that's designing solutions for our clients, we interact with each other via language. And so we're communicating requirements and designs and, and all the things that it takes to design some sort of system or solution. And you know, those typically are over meetings, notes, requirements gathering. And, and all of that is something that, as we've seen with the likes of things like ChatGPT, ha are increasing in power. And so anywhere where we're, we're using language to communicate, at both in either direction, uh, is a, a way that we can utilize to, to document that understanding, to suggest, to make sure that we have, haven't missed gaps, and, and all of those things to make a tighter solution. And, and those are things that, as you think about your own business, uh, it's, it's that power of language. It's, it's the universal API. It's the universal uh, way of, of communication. Uh, you know, it's unlocking ways to go from one place to another uh, that never have been available without, you know, more detailed programming. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. All right, with that, I am going to turn it over back over to you, Lance, uh, to, to talk about the impact, uh, the possible impact, and some of the cool stuff that you, that Serving Intel is working on in terms of the, you know, in terms of working with the senior living sector. And it's interesting to me that, you know, what Adam just expressed in terms of the power of language and how we can leverage that better and teach our customers how to leverage the power of that language and the power of the capability of, of things like Microsoft Copilot. You're about to give us an example of that here in, in, in a few slides. So I'm, I look forward to hearing that. Absolutely. Well, once you go ahead and bump next, what, what we did is we built our own AI system. And that's one of the things a lot of people don't understand. You think of ChatGPT, and now there's BARD, there's Claude by Anthropic. Um, there's a number of solutions that have popped up. In fact, off of those three solutions, there's thousands of solutions of people trying to mimic those three. And so what we did is we built our own. There are open source platforms out there. There's the operating system, the hardware, the platform itself, and then the managing of the database. These are the components that go into having your own system. But we built our own internal system called Ruby AI, and we use that to empower not only our operators, but also their customers. Uh, next slide for me. I've got a few examples of this, its, it's capabilities. And the first one we're going to start with has to do with the operators themselves. So next slide. When you go to our enterprise solution, so here we're, we're in our particular, we're our QA server of enterprise.servingintel.com. We have built the AI framework right into the system for operators. So if you can think of a dining room manager or a business office manager, we empower them with AI from a couple of different standpoints. Now, the first example I threw out there that I was thinking about was um, I like ground beef and I like jalapenos. Maybe the kitchen has extra ground beef and jalapenos they want to get rid of. So in the next slide, the operator put in a prompt, you know, create a recipe using ground beef and jalapenos. And the response, now, you got to think about this. This is two AI solutions working together. So Ruby, our AI solution, receives the prompt or the question from the, from the operator. And we don't have any recipes with ground beef or with jalapenos. So we pass that along to OpenAI via Microsoft. This is Microsoft's AI, or what they refer to as Azure AI. So we pass it on to them. Well, they have all of the power of OpenAI. So like, sure, here's a recipe, and it includes ingredients, it includes instructions on how to cook it, it includes nutritional information. You can add allergies onto this with the second prompt. And so for an operator to have that creative whim, 
there's a lot of senior living partners that do farm to table. And so you have to be, as a chef, you have to be super creative in an environment like that. AI can empower that chef, put in a few ingredients, you know, give us some context. Is this a fall entree, a summer entree? You know, what is it that we have here? And it'll create not just the name and the ingredients and the recipe to make it, it'll give you what we call a web description. It'll give you something that you can put on your e-commerce website or on your billboard marketing website. And you can take this wonderful dish that's just been made and you can send it out to the greater community. Um, there is a visual AI part of this. We haven't even put this into our solution yet. It, that technology is still maturing a little bit. Uh, it's easier for the uh, dining room manager to make the dish and take a picture of it and upload a picture. But at some point, you'll be able to take a recipe like you see on the screen right here and propagate that right into an AI picture of that particular dish. So the world of AI is opened up to our operators through the enterprise solution that they use day in and day out. And next, you talk a little bit about machine learning. And so this is tied to the Azure database that has all of the information for that community or those groups of communities. So this is what's revolutionizing reporting. You know, reporting of decades past was eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper that would come out of your dot matrix inkjet printer. Um, we're beyond that now, and we have the ability to do representations, slicing and dicing data as deep as you want to go. Um, our company is in the process. We use SQL Server, another Microsoft solution. We're deploying the latest version of that called SQL MI, or Managed Instance, and that takes all of the cloud data to a whole nother level. And so we have, where well, you can call it Windows Instant, basically it's a virtual server that's running the application on the front side. You have a secure point-to-point -point connection to that SQL instance in its own managed instance. And now we have the ability to have AI train on that data. And so you can ask just questions at a whim. What's the best selling item here you had? How many breakfasts did we serve yesterday? How many meals did we serve last week? And you get real time answers coming straight out of your database. So this is really gonna help with what's the best selling item that we had on our menu last quarter. Um, what server has served the most residents? Um, if you're using a survey module, what server has the highest satisfaction score for their service amongst all of the residents? And so real amazing qualitative data is available via text prompts. That's what's pretty cool about embedding the Microsoft AI technology right into your enterprise solution. Now, next, we're going to take Ruby, our solution, to another realm. Hey, and, hey, Lance. Yeah? But, but before we go to the next slide, I, I, I want to hone in on what you just said with Microsoft SQL Server. Um, one of the things that Copus does is, is we, we help our customers. We've got a, a business unit, if you will, where we help our customers to better manage and, and optimize banks of, of SQL servers. And what, what, I, what you just said that I find fascinating is, is that, and, and I was wondering if you could explore it just a, a, a little more, is, is when what you just described is something that a person or six persons in years past would do and they had to be very specialized in understanding and how to make the right SQL query to be able to pull the data out that they wanted to pull out and needed to pull out. Or they had to, you know, be able to pull it into an Excel spreadsheet and massage it and, you know, set formulas and all that kind of stuff so they could understand and, and work towards the answers that you just described that, relatively speaking, now can be manifested in an instant. You are so, correct, yeah. So that's that's just awesome to me, right? I mean, that that is can what what kind of can you what do you think is going to be the savings, the labor savings in just what you described? Do you have a concept in your head of I mean this is all so new, but but where what where, where that benefit is gonna land? Yeah, just think with of your it, customers. 
Absolutely. Think of it as technology as a service. I mean, it's yeah. Simply, uh, anybody can go into Azure or AWS and spin up a database, and, and you have an empty database, and then you have to start building out tables and columns and, and putting in value limitations. And, and, so, and so, yes, a database engineer or a team of database engineers starting from scratch right. can build all this out one at a time. Now, with ChatGPT, Azure AI, it actually it creates the scripts that build the database. It, it's a completely different world. Some companies uh, like Samsung and Apple uh, have forbid their engineers to use any of these AI solutions because they're concerned about the proprietary code. And if, uh, if we were doing firmware code, you know, super proprietary software driving hardware, I might have the same view, but we're not. We're using a number of different technologies, whether it's Python, React JS, or what we're talking about now, SQL scripting. The AI will create any of this via a text prompt. And so this is what's built into the SQL MI. What the SQL MI does is it takes the management, that's why it's called a managed instance, takes the management component out of this. And so uh, when you have a virtual server and you've got your web application on top of your SQL application, you end up having to manage a lot of the resources. Do you have a, a large enough CPU? Does it have enough threads? Do you have enough RAM? You know, a big one when, you're, when you have a database, an enterprise database, is the size of the disk drive. We're at 8 gigs, we're at 16 gigs, we're at 32 gigs. Constant optimization. We're right. storing data we shouldn't be storing. So a lot of this, not all of it, but a lot of this is handled by the MI. And one managed instance in Azure can run up to 100 different databases doing 100,000 different things. We're, we're all about single code base and we're multi-tenant architecture. If somebody comes to us and they want their own tenant, we absolutely can deliver that for them. But most of our folks, because of the high performance of our solutions, they're good with being a tenant inside of a multi-tenant architecture. At this point, Microsoft runs the game. They're responsible for the transaction, the sequences, uh, or the synchronization, the reporting on transactions, error reporting. Um, all of this comes out of SQL Man MI Studio. And um, yeah, it frees you up to do less of the grunt work and do more of the management work for our engineers. Yeah, so right on. AI is stepping up our team. Productivity is way up this year. Uh, AI is a requirement for our software developers, and we use a number of different solutions, not just ChatGPT. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, Lance, I think a, a topic and subject of, of a completely separate webinar could be the, the um, for lack of a better description, the private use and instance of Microsoft Copilot, where you don't have to worry about those proprietary things because everything is contained in your environment and you don't have to worry about the outside world and you have this very powerful Microsoft-enabled AI that, that can, can do all the things that you're, that you're describing right now. So Absolutely. awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll stop wasting time and go to the next slide. Thank you for exploring that, Lance. Greetings. <laughs> perfect. You're How are you point. today? I want to... Did you say pause? Yes, perfect. You okay. Did. okay. Yeah, so so the, the young lady on the right hand bottom of the screen is Ruby. And this is a speech to text, text to speech interaction between one of our software devs. His voice is a little quiet. So you got to turn up your volume a little bit or hear in. But he's having a voice to speech or voice to text conversation with Ruby. And this is how our customers, customers, the residents in the community, this is how they'll interact. And you'll notice in this short video, there's an interaction on ordering. We do an in room dining solution and a table side solution for our partners. But also, the questions aren't limited to food. So go ahead and click play there. Okay. Hello. Greetings. How are you today? I want to order caramel macchiato. How many caramel macchiato would you like to order? Four. For caramel macchiato has been added to cart, would you like to try our AJ's blueberry muffin? Yes, please. Yes. How many AJ's blueberry muffin would you like to order? I want 13. 
13 AJ's Blueberry Muffin has been added to cart. Is there anything else that you want to order? I'm good, thank you. All right. You can proceed now to check out. Can I ask a question? Uh, if you eat 1,200 calories a day, how long would it take to lose 70 pounds? The number of calories required to lose one pound per week is generally estimated as a 500 calorie per day deficit. Therefore, to lose 70 pounds at a rate of one pound per week on a 1,200 calorie per day diet, it would take approximately 70 weeks or 1.35 years. However, it's important to note that individual weight loss results can vary based on many factors such as age, sex, genetics, metabolism, and physical activity level. Additionally, it is recommended to consult a healthcare professional before beginning any major weight loss program. Uh, who is the founder of Google? Google was founded in 1998 by Larry Page and Sergey Brin while they were PhD students at Stanford University. They developed a search algorithm named PageRank, which became the foundation of Google's search engine. That's nice. Thank you. So this, what you saw the engineer do there during this presentation was the screen, the, our technology adjusts for the device. And so you start off at the full desktop mode, like a laptop or a desktop, and then you moved all the way into Android cell phone mode. You saw him flip the switch there to iPhone mode. So it doesn't matter, phone, tablet, desktop, it doesn't matter the size, all of our technology adjusts based on the screen of the user. And so this is a, a tool to empower folks. Now, a question we get is what, you know, there's a thing in AI called hallucinations. They, they're fun when you come across them. It's AI gives you an answer that is wrong, but they're very confident in the wrong answer. And so with our solution on the next slide, we have the ability to manage these conversations down at the senior living level. So on the next slide, you're going to see, um, you probably need to click Hello. the screen and pop, pop next. Greetings. A little carrot there on the bottom left. There you go. Perfect. So for our operators, specific to their community, they see every single conversation that takes place. And within the AI, and you can see also on the right-hand side, you see whether that system came from us or whether it came from Microsoft's AI. So you actually see the source of the data. And so we each one of these, on the left-hand side, you have the uh, tag, the ID tag for that conversation. You have the ability to go in and fix hallucinations. The confidence rating that you see right there in the uh, right center, it's yellow, green, red based on the responses. And the way that that works, because these AI solutions are neural networks, is when you throw out a word like yellow, there are other words typically associated with yellow, like yellow banana, yellow canary, yellow school bus. And when a response comes back that's not quite connected, is again, confidence rating, not quite connected to the utterance or the answer that was given, that confidence rating slides low. When you have what's called a happy story, those are green and they stay high. So in the next slide, I drill into one of those. And here you can see I have the ability to see the question, to see the answer, and we got a, a ripe yellow banana here. As the operator, I can make the answer shorter, I can make the answer longer, I can use AI to give a different answer, or I can simply put in an answer of my own. And so things like, if you think operationally, things like uh, you could have an events coordinator for a senior living community, and you have somebody and their name's Tammy, and Tammy is now gone, and now you've got a Susan, and a Susan's working there. If a resident were to ask the question, what's the name of the events coordinator, we don't want to put give them the learned name. We want to give them the new name. That would be an example of training, what we're doing here right now. Um, that events coordinator can come to the AI on the front end, the first slide we showed you, and they can voice rec in the events for tomorrow. You know, tomorrow at 7 a.m., we've got yoga on the back patio. At 9 a.m., we're going shopping at the mall. And they can voice rec in all the events for a day so that the residents can go, hey, what's going on tomorrow? What events do we have going on? And so using voice on a cell phone, you can very quickly build out schedules. This is about community engagement. 
and you can provide valuable information to residents quite literally in real time for what's happening in the community to keep them engaged. I think that was uh, the last of our AI examples on this next slide. Yeah, so that's, some of, that's the benefits that we've talked about. Improving the customer experience, the resident experience, higher levels of engagement, uh, reduced errors. This is a big part of it because residents themselves can also use their phone app to ask questions um, how many meal plan points do I have left? Or how many meal plan dollars do I have left in my account? Um, how much, this, this would be a great one, how much did I spend on alcohol last month? <laughs> Might be an eye-opening answer back to that resident. And so by giving the residents quick, fast, accurate answers, you free up the business office to have to drill in and get these answers for the resident out of the database. So you get streamlined operations. And with that, I think we're going to flip gears over to Adam. Alrighty. So Dynamics 365 Business Central is an ERP and accounting system. So, uh, you know, as, as we talked uh, earlier and Lance talked about, uh, you know, I've, I've used the phrase operational ERP for the, the types of systems that, that serving Intel uh, provides because they they interact with that front of the house and and they get all the way down to the financials, and a lot of times they're they're tightly uh, integrated with with a system like D three sixty five Business Central, uh, and and part of what the ERP system is trying to solve is making sure that we have everything, you know, from a financial perspective. Uh, tagged and documented and 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 we're we're alleviating some of the the things that normally would be in excel and and so uh you know tying those together are really really important so uh, i i mentioned earlier about getting you know when we when we look at the 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 overall spectrum there of the of the microsoft platform you know if if erp and accounting were were the the place that were the highest priority for for your organization to, to begin, right? Because at some point everything lands in in the accounting system to make sure that this isn't just a hobby. Uh, you know, we we face different things within the senior living uh, sector that that make our jobs a little easy, a little harder on the accounting side, and some of that has to do with different diverse revenue streams and how you want to slice your your financials so that ultimately you can make better decisions and that might be along your service types or whether uh, that's private insurance or government uh, you know location based there's there's just a number of different ways that that you may want to, to slice that up uh, and that can be that can make things a little bit challenging. That maybe you're pulling that into Excel. I think you'll hear that uh, a number of times uh, throughout the course of our discussion. That Excel is uh, both a powerful tool. It's used by just about, uh, or some equivalent of Excel is used by just about every organization. And because of its power and, and accessibility, it becomes our default. And then eventually, it becomes, you know. Our, our, our crutch and then it becomes the thing that's holding us back. And so uh, as we convert those and, and kind of graduate from uh, that you know, holding us back into uh, more systematized, uh, then we can unlock the, the, the power of things like automated workflow and then ultimately things like Power Platform or uh, AI to, to even interface with, with our data. Other financial uh, complexities are around the variable expenses. So residents changing needs, uh, maybe that impacts staffing ratios. Uh, and then especially over the last few years, we've seen uh, more than ever a, su a fluctuating supply chain. So our, our costs of even consumables are, are just you know, changing rapidly and it's making, uh, making decisions around uh, those as we tie those back to our revenue streams, you know, you know, how we need to adjust to, to, to compensate for this. Additionally, in the senior living community, we are uh, very asset based. So there may be facilities, it's equipment, there's improvement to those facilities. So maybe 
uh, capital expenditures, uh, and budgeting and planning for all that, uh, as well as paying CPAs to, to manage all those depreciations when, when systems exist or um, you know, not managing that in Excel as well. Lastly, from a, a compliance perspective, it's a heavy uh, regulated industry. Uh, you know, contract accounting, make sure we have our uh, deferrals in place. Uh, you may be getting uh, grants and, and government uh, funding, so their fund accounting you know, is, is definitely something that you, you may con, uh, consider in managing those restricted funds. Uh, and then ultimately audit. Uh, do we you know, Audit is, is not a, while it's a, a necessary evil to make sure that we are doing the things that we need to do, you know, it's not necessarily driving uh, resident care and, and, and resident outcomes. So uh, ultimately doing, automating as many of these things so that uh, we can focus on, on the things that are improving the, the lives of our residents. Is how can the ERP system help with all those things? So. Uh, from a, a financial perspective and reporting and analytics, uh, there are, unlike some you know, legacy and, and basic systems, we can actually tag our transactions with lots of dimensions. And so much like an Excel sheet with lots of columns, as we, tra as we tag all of those, those transactions with those different dimensions, then we can pivot and, and do uh, some pretty granular reporting and, and analysis on our financials, uh, setting up specific uh, ratio analysis against our service types or locations, uh, pulling all of that into Power BI and then connecting it with other systems so that we can tie those things to, uh, you know, maybe uh, the, the kind of the operational uh, data as well. And, and, and eventually getting down to where uh, from a, a budgeting and forecasting perspective, we're setting targets uh, that ultimately drive our, our, our ideal NOI state. And so as we back those up and, and look at what the targets need to be against the different service types and locations, you know, we have the granularity in the system that uh, we don't have to pull that all, all out into Excel and then do analysis on it, and then get the result, which is now weeks later from, from when the, the actions have happened. We also, because of the heavy asset business, we don't want to plan those capital expenditures out, make sure that we're on target for those expenditures and those projects that are, are required to, to meet the needs of our residents, um, and, and ultimately tracking assets uh, at managing those assets within the system so that you know they are we're not paying CPAs to to manage those or, or doing those in Excel uh, on the billing and invoicing side this is where systems uh, like serving Intel can assist and and push that data into uh, systems like business central and there's easy imports down to the the transaction level it can also manage the deferrals for some of the uh, contract billing and ensure you're in line with best practices there. And if you if you do have flexible and, and different types of billing structures uh, aligning uh, those different dimensions as as it comes into the system, so that you're you're it's flowing straight into the reports in real time. Lastly, there can be some uh, business rules around fund accounting and grants. And you may have uh, restrictions on, on uh, you know, restricted funds that you, you need to make sure that are, are tracked appropriately and, and ultimately secure from uh, you know, who can use what thing. So you may have approvals uh, as well. And all of that can be tracked within the system. Adam, I got a question as you're sharing this. One of the thoughts I have is that this is part of a, a larger solution. Um, can you give examples of other third-party plugins, for lack of a better term? What ways an operation has taken another thing and tied it into Business Central, automated it in order to get better efficiencies for a company? Sure. So as another example, you know, some organizations do have carry inventory, right? And so you may, as, as that inventory volume uh, grows, you may want to tie in things like scanners 
and 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 track that inventory going in and out uh, quickly. Uh, other things would be uh, as you ingest things like purchase order or sorry uh, purchase invoices from your vendors, rather than having somebody key in all that information, uh, can you tie that with uh, optical character recognition to automatically uh, to code those maybe uh, to uh, do three-way matches and and ultimately get get vendor payment and and everything tied to your financials appropriately. Cool. I'll I'll speak also, Lance, to um, you know one of those partners that we have when we're when we're. Um, uh, working toward working alongside one of our customers in terms of helping them to get the most out of Microsoft Business Central is a, is a, a AP automation partner and and that partner has has helped and and we've seen the use of that technology you know drive teams of AP personnel from in terms of efficiencies from you know, 75 or 100 people to five to 10, uh, in in terms of the organizational efficiency that that you know an AP automation software can bring to bear in conjunction with the power of Business Central. I saw the yeah. OCR early on, and I, I can't remember if it was Lens or if it was uh, it might have been Vista, but just reading this is a silly example, but reading business cards as we were deploying the sales module. You could slap any card. It didn't have to be straight. It could be, it could be 90 degrees. It could have colors on it. It could be stupid business card. And it would re-hit and just put every field in its spot perfect every time. I was floored how amazing it is. Of course, this speeds up salespeople when they're pumping in information, does the data entry for them. So silly example, but it was pretty amazing to watch it. Yeah, and you see them learn too. So as you get new vendors and who have different, uh, invoice you know, structures. If if it misses something, you know you you tell it where that particular thing is, and then the next time it's got it. So it, it learns pretty quickly. Additionally, we also see, especially with organizations with multiple locations, managing uh, purchase recs and and having workflows for those are also great time savers uh, because we're instead of doing that type of thing through through email. Uh, managing those those purchases and making sure they're getting into the system for, for proper approval is great. All right, so how does this all, so we, accounting's not always the most uh, exciting uh, topic, but how does this all tie to resident care? And, and ultimately, a, a healthy financial organization is providing the best resident care. And, and tying that care to, to costs and making sure our ratios are proper uh, helps keep, you know, and seeing that early so that we don't get too far off and, and then are trying to catch up uh, and, and maybe having some unintended consequences with, with some of those that, that catch up. Ultimately, that, that helps to, to put us on a firm foundation for uh, providing great resident care. Uh, and, and being able to see that visually sometimes through things like Power BI uh, and having the granularity of, of everything that's coming in it all you know it all ultimately lands in here and we need to make uh, decisions on that data and, and normally the decisions that we're making are are you know are impactful here and when you tie all of that into the integrations with other pieces of the Microsoft platform and other third parties uh, whether that's a CRM system, as, as Lance mentioned, or your HR systems, or you know, you know we we also need to keep in mind uh, while we can create those that 360 view of, of our residents, we do so in protecting that PII and 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 make sure that we're we're keeping the HIPAA standards. So now that we have the the platform and we have the sort of the blocking and tackling on the ERP and accounting system, everything's coming. And here, now we can take things to the next level with even automated workflows. So uh, Microsoft's Power Platform, which kind of underpins that entire spectrum, 
that Lance men mentioned and connects those dots uh, with uh, both integrations and, and ultimately a, an underlying uh, data uh, structure, we can, we can make automated workflows, we can take action either you know, through interactions with, with our humans, our, 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 our people, but also automated actions. And as we, as we go through those automations, you start to see trends and, and you know, like I, I know in my own approval processes, there are certain things I look for. Well, let's create rules for those certain things that I look for and now I'm looking for exceptions. And, and this all uh, kind of shows us a where as we iterate through all this, and I mean how we implement all these, is typically an iterative process. Lance mentioned that as they they uh, got onto the the AI train, iterating through all of this is a, is actually a pretty efficient manner of getting to what our our vision is. Because if we if we go pick that 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 vision and try to to nail it right from here, this field is changing so quickly, and our businesses are changing quickly. And so by the time you know we're you know we're coming out and we're, we're six months into it, heads down, things have changed. And so by iterating, we, we learn, we grow, and then we make those changes uh, so that we can go through that kind of minimum viable project, if you will, to, to get to where we're trying to go. So Adam, a, a quick question. So can you explore just a little bit in terms of what you were just saying? Um, it, it, perhaps related to um, not only Business Central, but uh, the, the automation and, the, and the, the visibility that is, how can that be better leveraged through Copilot? And, and I, I guess really what, what I'd like to explore just a little bit more and, and get your view on is, you know, the, for for those in the audience perhaps that are kind of raising an eyeball and going, can I trust AI? How useful can it really be to my business? Um, it's so new. Maybe I should let other people work the kinks out before I dive in. I mean, they, they, these are things that I ask, right, that I would say. But, but can you help us understand what we're looking at in terms of how the pace of change and the pace of the use of the better use of and visualization of data is how, how do you see that accelerating um, the use of of the entire Microsoft technology stack and world in, in terms of go making pieces interrelate and helping us to better see and understand the 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 data that is in an accounting system and can be visualized better and understood better through Power Platforms. Sure. So, yeah, Power Platform and, and Dataverse are ultimately, you know, maybe a, a model of, of today, right? So they are the model of your organization. The data from Business Central can be uh, tied into to, to Dataverse. Same with Dynamics 365 for sales and customer engagement so as you as you start to land that data uh, into the, the power platform and dataverse uh, now you can they're, they're tied together right so you you can interact with both pieces simultaneously from there uh, copilot is sort of Microsoft's uh, one piece of copilot within the power platform anyway is a way that you can describe what you're trying to accomplish and from an automation and workflow perspective and power platform will, will, will interpret that so uh, as I, I mentioned the the language part is the so we're, we're doing uh, natural language understanding to understand the intent of the user and then the the generation part is okay now that we understand that let's put all the building blocks and connect the pieces without someone having to be, you know, a JSON expert or something like that. And, and we're getting that connection uh, and building those workflows using our natural language. So that's how we can build new things and build those uh, integrations and workflows. 
Uh, but then it, you asked, well, how does it? Uh, how can we use that? You know, maybe even another le level up as as Microsoft releases Copilot for all of the various uh, Office applications, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, we can begin to use that on the data within those Office applications, and and think if if you're just getting into AI and, and we're just beginning, you know, one strategy again back to that. Let's do minimum viable. Maybe we're not starting with something that's going directly to one of our uh, our, our residents or our, our vendors or anything that's like external. Maybe we're starting with these are things uh, like in Lance's first example uh, that we're generating that begin to help our our folks from an internal perspective. So it's reducing right. maybe the the mental load for them to to do their job. So. Uh, while maybe somebody, uh, I, think, I think an example a lot of people have used is in, in the marketing space to generate content. You know, we're not just sending that content out. Generated content is, is actually not scored well from a, uh, from a, uh, like a Google perspective. But we, those are great places for somebody to start who has that experience and then take that from there and, and actually kind of upskill them or reduce their reduce their uh, mental load. Thank you, Adam. Hey, I'm going to do a time check here. We've got about four minutes to uh, uh, bring this to a conclusion for today. And, and again, I apologize to the audience for my, my fumble in the very beginning. I, I pray that never happens again. But uh, I hope very sincerely, as Lance laughs at me, that you have gotten some good knowledge out of this and, and we really would like a chance to further an opportunity to further uh, continue this conversation. So, Adam, please, please continue for the next couple minutes, please. Uh, I think last thing, and, and I mentioned this just a moment ago. I really encourage to. to you know, we're we're big big believers. It's one of our core values: is simplify. You know, start with the minimum viable project. Right. You, you don't need to Absolutely. solve every problem to start with. Uh, you do need what you need, right? There's no doubt that you know you're not going to you don't want to go backwards. Uh, but starting from uh, a, a minimum viable project, you'll learn more about the capabilities and, and the different things with each each of the pieces of the wheel, and then you can grow from there. All right, I'm I'm dialed in to the uh, the the comment section on LinkedIn, the invite for this webinar. Um, Look, if, if you have questions, please put it in the comment section as you continue to digest uh, what we've said today. Also, you can reach us at um, uh, on our LinkedIn profiles uh, for Lance, Adam, and I. We have a question from Ron Clark here who said he got the time wrong and um, is wondering if it's recorded. And the answer, of course, is yes, and we'll post that and share it. Thank you for the question, Ron. But, but look, you can also find contact information for all of us on our websites. Um, you, you can, um, uh, as, as well as our email addresses are on our LinkedIn profiles, um, please ask to, to join our network. We will happily add you to ours, and we'd love to be a part of yours. So we, do so, have, we do have a question in the comment section. Go ahead. All right, so Angela asks... Uh, for senior living communities that maybe don't have a CTO on staff, would this AI be simple to implement? And I guess, I guess there's a couple of different ways that you could take this. One, um, from the highest level, I would encourage all senior living leaders to be training their teams on ChatGPT if they use a computer. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, the power, and in, in, in fact, our organization uses three. So a little secret sauce here. Um, if you need real-time information, we use BARD, B-A-R-D, BARD.Google.com. If you need to analyze large documents, we use Claude. That's from a company called Anthropic. That's C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I, Claude dot A-I. So we use three from a general operations standpoint. And then Copilot actually has a Microsoft plugin for GitHub. So all of our programmers, software developers, use Copilot themselves within their development network. 
in our environment. And um, then from there, we've got a number of different solutions. Black box is another. Um, just depends on what the technology is and what the offerings out there are. And so is it simple to set up? I'm going to answer Angela, yes, it is. But it's kind of like a whale. And you begin to eat a whale by biting one of the fins. Um, there's a lot of different ways you, a, a community can deploy their own platform. They can get set up on Microsoft's Azure AI uh, within a tenant in Azure database. Um, you can machine learn against your own organization's data um, in Teams. There's been a lot of deployment of AI through Microsoft Teams recently where HR can create questions that answer, you know, how many vacation days do I get? How many have I used? I mean, it's, it's mind-numbing the way the tentacles, the way AI is going into corporate operations and making life easier for folks. I say it will increase your creativity at your job and your role, and at the same time, it'll elevate your discernment because you're going to get more information faster, but you also have to discern what information you're going to use, where, and for whom. You could even ask uh, ChatGPT and the like to help you plan that out. But they actually will give you their grade at making plans, and you can use the prompt and prompts to adjust those plans and, and, and kind of help you strategize. Absolutely. Well, and I'll add just a touch to what Lance and Adam just said. What we ultimately want with you, Angela, and any of the participants on this webinar, is we want to be your trusted provider. And we want to grow with you. And we want to help you to realize the technology and systems that are best for your business and how you how you need to use it. So please engage with us. Let us know how we can help you. And, and we would love to do so. Awesome. So our time's up. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time very much. And we look forward to uh, any future conversations that we have with you. We hope this, was, this information was meaningful and informative to you and your business. Thank you for sharing some of your Friday afternoon with us today. And um, we look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.